The last few days have been positively insane for the division community, with players from all walks of life lashing out at anyone in their way, many times crossing the line and forgoing all professionalism in favor of what I would call community cannibalism. Not quite what you were expecting to hear as you began your weekend, but there's no point in candy coating any of this. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Latuna Buzz Lightbeer, and this has kind of been at the boiling point, but was supercharged and ended up exploding once TU 16.1 went live this past Tuesday. Let's roll through it all the week that was with the Division Universe. I guess we could call this episode The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Before we begin, thanks for all the continued support. Please smash that big, beautiful subscribe button for more intensive Division coverage. And don't forget to ring the bell and set your notifications to all to receive my future upload alerts. Let's begin. So if we're going to follow the video theme for this episode, we might as well start with the good. The Division Heartland. Now, through all the chaos and uncertainty with the franchise, Heartland seems to be the most immune. After that rather meager UB forward showing, it continues to plug away silently in the background, announcing another closed playtest for October 3rd through the 7th. Now, I was lucky enough to receive an invite to this one, kind of rare for me to get invited to anything Division these days, but this one was sent over by a friend and fellow community member, so. I guess we're going to give it a go. For me, it will be interesting to see just how far this offering has progressed, as I was actually a part of the first playtest early last year, the one where all that footage hit the internet, so hopefully that gives you an idea the last time I touched Heartland. From the rumors I'm hearing, the game has been heavily modified and polished since then, and I'm pretty stoked about seeing the progress and modifications it has gone through. Of course, the entire playtest is still under strict NDA, so unfortunately, I won't be able to report on anything that I get to try out. Just a side note here, but with Skull and Bones now being delayed yet again, Heartland could fit in nicely to a November launch time frame and could provide the Division community something new to get behind. You know, who knows what will happen, but one can hope, right? Shifting gears, and let's next hop over to Resurgence, the upcoming free-to-play Division mobile game. And I guess this one could be the bad, bad, as in it looks kind of badass with returning to NYC in the snow in a Division 1.5 model. Or for some of you, it's just plain bad, because it's coming to mobile and that's not your thing. Now, I've also enrolled to try this one out for playtesting, but who knows when it will come to North America. Of all the Division Universe offerings, Resurgence seemed to be the most prepared for the UB Forward event. They had an entire trailer showcasing a bit about their take on the Dark Zone, which looks to have a 20-minute timer mechanic. The comms team also seems to be taking it kind of seriously and posting informational splashes on Twitter every few days. They're still taking applicants for playtesting, and yesterday, Fabrice Navrez, executive producer on the game, was featured in a Q&A with GameSpot. I will, of course, link the video and tweet in my video description, but it was good again to see the return to those vibes of The Division 1. There is a full mission in the snow on Liberty Island with the Statue of Liberty featured prominently in the background, and the entire video is just under four minutes long. Now, another facet Navrez touched on, and one that I think deserves a lot more attention, is the fact that the open world is in a shared community, so you can run into other live players while exploring the environments. And by the way, this is the first Division game where our characters are no longer mute. They yell back at our targets, hurling not only rounds, but intimidations downrange. I'll kill every last one of you! The Resurgence team is keeping a release date kind of close to the chest, and even when repeatedly asked, they just simply respond only that they have no information on global release dates. And now, on to the ugly. The Division 2 launched TU 16.1 this past Tuesday, and I covered the game that day with this video, which I will link in the video description, kind of outlining the avalanche of newly broken or incomplete fixes that update brought to the live game. 
missing installations from the patch notes like Picaro's holster and Striker's battle gear, modified gear pieces like the closer chest piece and the failed PvP shrapnel traps, and then the delay of the apparel event and of course that stealth and or silent change to the summit XP farm on floor 10. Even the most dedicated and positive players, those that live, eat, and breathe the division, were looking at TU 16.1 and wondering what the hell happened. This led to community members publicly and privately flaming and hurling foul things towards dev team members and other agents alike, by the way, all of which needs to stop immediately. Listen, I think I can say with a fair bit of confidence that I am one of, if not the most, critical content creators when it comes to The Division. When I see mistakes, I call them out. When I see indecision or poor choices, I am critical. But one thing I never do is make it personal. It is a game. And yes, we as consumers that have paid hard-earned money for this product can and should have certain expectations as to how that product must perform. But cutting loose on individuals, making them targets, flinging foul remarks towards not just them, but their family is simply out of bounds. There were many times that I had conversations with Thylander and we were on opposite ends of the spectrum. He wanted to zig and I was 100% in favor of a zag. But when he decided to zig, despite my feelings, that didn't mean I just started popping off at him with hateful rhetoric and threats. I guess I don't want to spend much more time on this topic, but damn, people, calm down. Use some common sense, show some decency, and go about it in the right manner. You can go about making your points, grievances, and counterproposals with just as much weight and effectiveness without all the filth. Trust me. I know. It's what I do. It's what I've done for years with this franchise and will continue to do as long as I can. Mini rant over, thanks for listening, and let's quickly finish up with this tweet from the Division team. A little late, as it went live on Friday, when it should have gone live on Tuesday, you know, the day the failed update launched, or at the latest Wednesday, but alas, here it is. They've updated the known issues board, owned up to Picaro's holster and the shrapnel trap and PvP, and made some sort of an update on the Floor 10 Summit XP farm. I always include the known issues board site link down in the video description and pinned comments, so give it a look. There are all of these categories based on severity of issues, but for me, looking over the game, it comes down to five key areas that need the most attention, what they would call critical. Number one, the invisibility exploit. This requires no explanation. Number two, the shrapnel trap and still how strong it is. Again, no explanation or feedback required. Number three, the PC stability and overall stability of the game ever since TU15 went live is still a major hindrance for players to enjoy the product they paid for. Number four, removing expertise and shade levels in non-invaded dark zones, which I believe is a symptom of the bigger issue, which is number five, the Summit XP farm on floor 10. And I purposely left this one to last because, you know, I've weighed in on this many times. I don't believe it deserves any attention at all. And the optics of patching this out of the game, which now is a three and a half year old game, just looks ridiculous. At this point, Massive should be looking for and or embracing reasons for players to engage with the game, not to take away something that people actually enjoy. You could really get into the nuts and bolts of this one, how farming floor 10 allows players to quickly fly through the season track and by patching it out of the game, it could potentially push more players to spend real money to purchase those rewards instead of hitting the season grind, which is quite slow, or by how farming floor 10 over and over, it allows players to quickly tick off shade ranks and expertise levels, which if used in PVP does provide power increases over lower level players but it all feels like we have a case of bad optics. Removing to promote paid seasonal passes and by patching out floor 10 or resource convoys or whatever, they are attempting to address the symptoms and not the disease. If too much and gaining ranks too quickly is creating such an imbalance in PvP, and to be fair, the number of players that actively participate in both PvE and PvP in the division is really quite small, probably around 5% or less of the player base, but if that is indeed an issue, then set limits on where shade ranks and expertise is applied within PvP. 
set up the different dark zones to allow for different limits. One is unlimited, one is balanced, and one is completely disabled. I don't know. There, there isn't a PvE issue here, as no one complains about someone with a bazillion shade rank in the matchmaker. So massive. Dev team, address the disease and not the symptoms. Goodwill, player engagement, and continued engagement are super critical to The Division 2 right now. Stop enacting changes that maybe you feel will improve the overall health of the game, but when seen through the eyes of someone that is on the other side, that interacts with the game on a daily basis and feels you are doing your best to slow them down and or limit their experiences within the game. Sorry for that mini rant bit during The Division 2 portion of the video, but... It needed to be said. As always, I look forward to reading your feedback in the comments section below. Remember to smash that sub button and ring the bell to receive all my future upload alerts. If you could take a few seconds more to rate and or share this video, it would be greatly appreciated. You can find and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and over on my community Discord server. All links to my socials can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.